Captain's Log, cheesy. Hello and welcome to another episode of How to Be a Great GM. Uh, we are looking at settings and today we are not necessarily looking at Star Trek, but we are looking at science fiction settings. And uh, we'll go through our usual process of what do we expect, what kind of plots are we going to have, what is our tone, and some of the references that we might look at to come up with better ideas. There is something different, though, about Star, Star Trek and other science fiction shows that will change the order in which we look at them. And you're going to find out that change a little bit later on. But first, let's look at expectation. When you say to your players, we're going to play in a science fiction setting. There are a whole bunch of things that pop into one's mind. And of course, there's that huge debate over whether Star Wars is fantasy or science fiction. Personally, I hold that it's fantasy because it has the force, which is magic. This also includes any of the Warhammer 40k stuff. It involves magic. So, although Star Trek has a certain amount of telepathy in it, which by most standards is magic, it purports itself mainly to be science fiction and science driven. And this is the big thing about a science fiction setting. What are your players expecting? They're expecting science. Now, even if you're running a mercenaries in space, science and science-like effects are going to be coming up all the time they're not going to be expecting some kind of magical solution to save them from their problems. They are going to expect, however, some kind of scientific or mechanical way of solving their issues. So they're going to expect science. Does this mean you need to be a scientist? No, not at all. I actually have a little list of things that I generate like a quantum flux capacitor inhibit inhibitor. And there's an A and a B drive which feed into this flux inhibitor, or whatever the case might be. Throwing in some pseudoscience terms here and there can be really useful. What else are they expecting? Well, the big one is they're expecting aliens, aren't they? Or if you're going to play in a very low alien setting, which is kind of like a low magic setting, really, if you think about it. If you're going to play in a low alien setting, then they're at least expecting alien environments. So planets beyond the stars, what type of planet are we exploring today? Is it another Earth? Is it ice planet? Is it water planet? Is it desert planet? Is it whatever the case might be? Is it a gas giant? So there is no actual planet. It's all just gas. So they're going to be expecting aliens and alien type environments. These are things you're going to have to give them. And even if you are doing a science fiction setting based on Earth, where there is no space travel whatsoever, which is another thing that they're expecting, by the way. But even if you set it on Earth where there is no space travel, they're still going to be expecting to be in some kind of alien environment, an environment which we don't currently experience here on Earth today. And those are becoming quite scarce with things like VR and computer games, of course, have been around for a long time. But VR is transporting us to those new environments. So they're going to expect an alien environment. So make sure that you have some kind of twist on your, your alien world or alien interpretation. They're going to expect space travel. And if you have space travel, that means they're going to expect starships. Now, whether your starship is a constructed quantum bubble of thought that your heroes fly around in through the use of their minds manipulating the quantum flux field, and that's what keeps them afloat because they're such advanced humans. Or whether they fly around in gigantic dreadnought ships made out of 900 billion tons worth of iron bolted together and using a hyperdrive of some kind or a warp drive or a quantum flux drive or whatever it is that you want to use, they're going to expect some kind of space travel. They're going to expect this to take time. Or maybe you're going to go the event horizon route where they punch through our galaxy into another dimension and then they pop out on the other side. It only takes a few seconds in real time, but in that in-between space, that little void, who knows how much time is taken. So this is something that people are going to expect. Have you worked out your system of travel? If you look at something like Star Trek, for example, or Battlestar Galactica, your time travel scale is quite big. It takes a long time to move from one planet to another, days, weeks, months, 
or even years if you want to move from one side of the galaxy to the next. If you look at something like Stargate Atlantis, it takes a matter of weeks or even less if you have more advanced technology. So you've got to have that in your mind because your players are going to be expecting some kind of space travel. And of course then the very last thing that one might expect in science fiction is some kind of artificial intelligence. Is it the droid that manages to communicate as if it was a human and it has emotions and can go insane and kill all the humans? Or is it a computer AI, a virtual AI, that lives in the brain network that's been established across the entire human species using technology? And this AI is an all-pervasive being players will expect some kind of intelligent life. We are rapidly careening towards it as fast as we possibly can and I can't wait for the day that the first Terminator comes in and rips my arm off because at least I'll be able to roll over as I'm dying saying, eh, told you so. So AI is a thing that's happening now and so it's definitely going to be something in the future. Or is it something that's banned in the future? Either way, you need to look at it and you need to look at how you're going to handle it. There are a lot of sci-fi shows that acknowledged that AI was going to be something but realized that it was simply too dangerous and so they shut it down before it actually got legs. You need to make these decisions, especially if you're crafting your own science fiction world. If you're playing in a pre-generated one, well, you've got the droids from Star Wars, which I know I said wasn't sci-fi, but let's look at them as a scientific option. You've got the droids from Star Wars who either have emotions or don't have emotions or have emergent emotions. You've got the androids from Star Trek who are seeking emotions but have very limited uh, emotional responses. Uh, you have the AI from Star Trek which can interpret humans wishes but doesn't actually have a mind of its own until you program it to have a mind of its own and then it does and all sorts of things go wrong. So there are a whole different bunch of AIs that are out there or intelligent beings that are constructed from machines. You need to decide how you're going to handle it. So those are some of the expectations that we have from sci-fi. Of course, we also have the expectation of amazing technology. What kind of amazing, amazing technology are we going to have in the future? Well, in the 80s, they thought that a piece of plastic that we tapped on and we read was an amazing piece of science fiction technology that we'd only have access to in 2205 or later. Here is an amazing piece of technology which I already have and it's certainly not 2205, is it? It does exactly what Star Trek said it was going to do, except 300 years earlier. So what kind of amazing technology are you going to instill in your galaxy? Are we going to all be linked by some kind of quantum entanglement device that allows us to instantly think thoughts that change things all over the galaxy at the same time? How far are you going to push it? Well, it's as far as you want to push it. Bearing in mind, one of the tricky things about running your own science fiction campaign, and I should know because I've tried to run them many times, is that the players don't know what to expect. So unlike fantasy, where we've got tons of literature and decades worth of material, with science fiction, because it's almost, almost magic, but isn't, we know of a lot of things today that we're capable of doing and so it's a bit difficult for players to get into your science fiction world because, well, just how far has the technology gone? You need to make it fairly clear what the limitations are. Have you extended the lifespan of the average human to millennia? Have we been able to download our consciousnesses into a computer and have been able to now live as artificial creatures rather than as real creatures? Have you got dogs in space, which would be a thing? Well, Star Trek did it, and he was addicted to cheese. Need I say more? That series didn't last long, thank God. Anyway, moving on. Normally, we would look at what plots burst into your mind when you are thinking about your setting. Well, this is where we change it up. The correct order in my thinking on how to look at a setting based in a sci-fi is not on what plots you should be coming up with, but on what tone you want to set. So if you look at the staples of science fiction that we have, Battlestar Galactica, for example, which as far as I'm concerned is one of the greatest science fiction series ever produced, 
is a very dark tone. It's a political backstabber where everybody dies and everyone hates everyone and there are these robots all over the place and life just sucks. Then flip over to Star Trek where we've achieved galactic peace and we are an amazing race of enlightened human beings who mostly don't want to destroy the universe. Obviously, there are villains out there who are psychopaths and who do, but the rest of us are enlightened creatures. And then you get the gambit in between. Um, so, what tone are you wanting to set? Is it horrific? Is it something that's dark and very, very morose? In which case, you look at something like Alien or Aliens, where it's a very grungy universe run by corporations with these xenomorphs running around that will literally rip out your heart. From the inside. It's not a happy place. So decide on your tone first before you're looking at your plots because your plots will very much be informed by your tone. Another tone that you might look at is grunge versus technology. So there might be superior technology beings as in the animated film Titan AE which is also one of my favorite animated films Titan AE has these super advanced beings made out of energy that basically control the universe and the rest of the species are left to run on old junky pieces of junk that float around space and don't do very much. Is it that kind of tone? Are you going more for a militaristic tone? In which case everything's at war with everything and we are all about going to war and destroying stuff like Starship Troopers for example. Think about the tone that you want to set and from there we can then look at the plots. And of course there are a whole bunch of plots that jump out almost immediately depending on tone. Are you running more of a, let's say, optimistic environment? In which case the plots that get spun out are discovery of new cultures, exploration of new civilizations, and the idea that exploring is more important than conflict. And that conflict should be resolved through dialogue and discourse rather than through firing all your torpedoes at the enemy. Is it perhaps more of a commercialized universe where it's more about trade and getting the next deal? Where wars happen but they're on the outskirts of society and the more important aspect is what do you have to trade with me? Are we dealing in humans? Are we dealing in slaves? What's the story? So that's entirely derived from the tone that you're trying to set. Science fiction is, as one very, very, very famous person who I can't remember, so they weren't that famous, said it is the last playground of the philosopher where we can say what if there was a society of people who banned all technology and were suddenly put into contact with beings that had miraculous technology. What type of environment, what type of experiences are they going to be having? What about humans who think that they are the most technologically advanced and so we've colonized Mars? Does Mars break away from Earth? Does it want to become its own entity as The Expanse, the TV series from sci-fi, the new one which is very good, purports to, 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 to have happen? Do humans go beyond the, the asteroid belt that circumnavigates our solar system and discover alien species that are far more advanced than we are? And we get turned into a slave race because we breed quickly, we mature relatively quickly, and we're fairly adaptable workers to different environments. There's a whole range of different types of setting in sci-fi that you can explore. What if there aren't aliens out there? What if we truly are alone? What then happens? We have a whole galaxy of planets. NASA's just announced another thousand exoplanets that have been added to the catalog of potential spaces for us to go and colonize. Do we get these massive human organizations, such as in MechWarrior, where each one controls a thousand planets and has a billion soldiers running around? So you really can explore very interesting ideas, religious ideas, sexual ideas, technological ideas, ideas around morality, ethical ideas. There are so many that you can explore that it really should be a very exciting space for you to be in.
The challenge though with sci-fi is that it can start to feel as if everything is really just solved with technology. There's that one player who created the character who can speak all languages and so no encounter is difficult because the universal translator is broken. You have the other character who can fix an engine from a hundred meters away and so no mechanical fault is a problem. You have another character who has a disintegrate array, so any alien that they encounter, they merely disintegrate. So with advanced technology comes advanced problems for you as the game master to keep their capacity limited. Because unlike a fantasy setting where usually there's a progression of power accumulation on behalf of the players, you have to level up to unlock certain spells or to gain, gain a bigger spell pool, in a science fiction setting, a level one character can aim the Death Star at Alderaan and oops, I did it again. I brought in Star Wars. But the point of the matter is, is that science fiction doesn't need a level per se. Yes, you can fly better or you can shoot better. But ultimately, if you're firing a disintegration phased Polaron beam at your enemy, they're going to disintegrate, phase, and polarize into a million different particles. So you need to monitor that very carefully so that the difficulty level of your missions is based more on the intellectual puzzles that your players are solving than on combat necessarily. Because combat can, unless you get rid of the whole idea of having a disintegrating beam of energy and weaponry that can cut through planets, technology is a great equalizer. And it really does level out the playing field. And a lot of the science fiction uh, rule settings have difficulty differentiating and trying to make characters seem different. If I have an AI on board my starship, I don't need any skills. Computer, please would you solve this history problem? Computer, here's a riddle. Please solve it. Computer, this person needs to be healed. Please heal them in the medical bay. You have an automated robot that does it. So science fiction brings with it the challenge that everybody's equal. And this is a fear that we have today. If AI starts to take over our menial tasks and robots start to develop AI and they can do our more advanced tasks, what is then left for us as a species to actually do? Once AI and robots can start to make themselves, the human being is not that useful anymore. Why pay a worker to work in your field for eight hours a day when you can have an AI that auto-manages all of the robots in your field and it works 24 hours a day? Why bother having lawyers when we can simply build robots that are assholes? So the point is, you've got to look at all of this technology, you've got to look at this level playing field and try and find plots that engage the intellectual capacity of your player rather than their skill sets because their skill sets are going to vary as well. This is another challenge that you have with science fiction settings, more so than with, say, fantasy settings or post-apocalyptic settings, really, is that often players will go, I'm going to be the best pilot in the galaxy ever. I will fly everything, anywhere, under any conditions, even if it's a different species and I've never encountered their technology before. And I'm going to dump all of my value points, pips, whatever it is the system you're using, into being the most awesomest of pilots ever. Right, could you please cook a meal on your starship before you starve to death? Uh, I don't have the skill. So in a sci-fi setting or a modern setting, you get players who kind of gravitate to very specific tasks because they don't really know what they should be focusing on. And if you look at your own skill set, you might have some very, very sharp skills in certain areas, but in other areas, you've got quite a lot of skills. You might not be able to cook, but you can dance, which is a performance skill. You might be able to drive a car, but you can't fly an aeroplane. But if you can drive a car, doesn't that mean that you can drive a truck? Well, you might know a little bit, but maybe you're not. It depends. We also have a gigantic education system, which whether it works or not is another question, but you are far more skilled up than the average peasant living in France in 1205 AD. This is because of a whole bunch of reasons, namely you have access to books and nowadays you have access to YouTube channels, right? So your knowledge base to begin with is far greater than the average fighter in Dungeons and Dragons. This is 
the interesting puzzle that you get from science fiction, plus all the wonderful adventures with aliens and alien worlds and AI and all those kind of things, this is the real challenge to run a long-term science fiction game where your players step back going, this is such a cool space universe, I want to play here. And we know it's possible because there are a great number of science fiction shows and video games that come out on a regular basis that have got really engaging worlds and really engaging storylines. And so far we haven't come across a lot of aliens that are the same because we can go mad with them in our imaginations. If you look at Mass Effect, they've got a whole bunch of aliens. You go, well, that's similar to that. That's similar, but not the same. So remember, one of the things of how to be a great GM is how to take what you expect and tweak it slightly, change it slightly. Are your starships organic beings? It has been done in the TV series Farscape, but let's push it further. Maybe it's an intelligent being and they're parasites along for the ride, so they never have one starship that they actually own. They just hitch a ride on these giant lunar whales, or whatever the case might be. So in summation, science fiction is an amazing setting because it allows you to explore tone quite specifically. And we're going to look at tone in your setting in the next video, hopefully. And Tone really does, in science fiction, determine the type of plots you're going to have. And there are so many plots that you can have in science fiction settings. References that you can have a look at in case you haven't picked up in the entire video length. Star Trek, you can look at any of them. The ones that were made in the 60s, a lot of the technology that was done then as future, we already have. The later Star Trek's got better and better and better until the Enterprise was released and that was a disaster. So don't watch the last one. Look at the new movies that are coming out. They're a lot more entertaining and accessible to modern day audiences than the original films were, but the original films were better. You can look at Battlestar Galactica, a phenomenal TV series. Really good science fiction because it didn't really feel like science fiction. Uh, you can look at Farscape, a wonderful Australian-American co-production. What Farscape did was they said, we're going to have weird aliens and we have a small budget. So it's a man in a puppet and it will talk and we will assume it's an alien. It's a great, great off-the-wall series, very nice series. And I mentioned The Expanse which is a new sci-fi uh, offering to us. It's really top class, very political kind of sci-fi, very low sci-fi as a matter of fact. They treat the science fiction part as every day. So when you're watching it, it could be set in the streets of New York. It just happens to be set out over Mars and then asteroid belt out near uh, Jupiter and, and that kind of thing. So there are a lot of sources you can look at. Computer games, there are a million computer games out there. Mass Effect, for example, has got a great series of three. I believe there's a fourth one coming out. Eve has got another one. So there are games of plenty for you to draw upon for inspiration. Until next time, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that share button. If you haven't been to our website, go and check it out. You can find all of our videos nicely laid out there, plus a whole bunch of other stuff, www.greatgamemaster.com. And until next time, happy gaming.